we thank God for you joining us again for YPWW. And we do wish and thank God for this holiday season. Wish you a Merry Christmas. And tonight, uh, quickly, we go to lesson number four, Seeking God First, Part Two. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity. And God, we ask that you reveal to us tonight your word. Give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. Amen. So tonight, I won't be before you long, uh, but we are on lesson number four, Seeking God First, Part Two. And again, I pray that you're enjoying time with your family as we come before you tonight with this brief summary of the YPWW lesson. And the aim of this lesson is to understand what it means to acknowledge God first for a direction in all situations. In the paragraph in our application, it says, to fully put God first, believers must do as David and forget about what others think. They must let go of their hurts and personal feelings long enough to think clearly. They can hear from God when they listen to him. We must know the heart of God and follow it. Amen. So again, our lesson text is from 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 19, and Matthew 6, 33. And, you know, we really won't have to worry about things again if we uh, truly seek God first. And when we look at this lesson on tonight, uh, it makes us ask the question, can you seek God when it seems like everybody is against you? Especially when the, it's people that you love and that you care about that start to criticize you. And, you know, when they criticize the word criticism means to, you know, people show their disapproval for decisions that you make or the things that you do. And, you know, regardless of how well we live our lives and how uh, much we stay close to the will of God or try to conduct ourselves in front of people, there there is always going to be somebody that has something to say. And when situations like this and we, that we're studying tonight come our way, we need to know how to respond. And just to recap, I know we kind of hit on it a little bit last week, but today we find David again, you know, he was in the Philistine land waiting for God to deliver. When they got there, they seen that their town had been destroyed by the Amalekites and the people, you know, they turned on David. They thought it was his fault, you know, when apparently, again, David apparently had to think that he was doing, the, you know, he was thinking he was doing the right thing, but the people saw things a different way. And so, you know, during this time, this caused uh, his own people to turn on him, to come against him. And when they seen what happened, you know, they wept till they couldn't weep no more and they needed somebody to blame. So they start blaming David. They turned on David. And again, what they failed to realize was, that David's wife were taken captive too, but they were so concerned with themselves, they refused to see the bigger picture. And that's just how some people are. You know, very often people are caught up in themselves, you know, how they feel, what's happening to them and how they're being affected. And they can't see things with an open mind, you know, and we want to make sure that we aren't like these people. And the best way to deal with this is to do what David did. And that's not respond at all. You know, during situations like this, this is a time where we should seek God and saints just need to be saints. You know, if we don't seek God and we focus on people, verse six of our text shows us what could happen. The effects on focusing on the wrong things. You know, verse six tells us that David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. You know, so his heart was broken because the people had turned on him. They was talking about stoning him. And when it's your own people coming against you, you know, that can touch you in an area where just any other person can't touch you, you know, and the devil knows this. So even though it may hurt, we can't allow people coming against us to control our lives because some people just never be happy. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter how you try to satisfy them. But in the end, we have to remember the only one who deserves to be pleased at all costs is God. But, you know, he was upset, he was hurt, but he didn't respond to them, you know. And when we have a relationship with God, it'll bring the word of God back to our remembrance. Uh, like First Peter 5 and 7, 6, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So humble yourself to, you're not humbling yourself to them, but you're humbling yourself to God. And when David did react, you notice that 
David turned to God and he called on his name. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And he knew things might look bad, but David knew that God was still in control. And that gives us confidence. And when we see that when he inquired into the Lord, the Lord told him to pursue and overtake. So it's important for us to know that we should seek God first. And he didn't just tell him that I'm going to pursue. You know, he humbled himself and asked God, shall I do this? What he was basically saying is, God, I don't want to do anything without your approval or your direction. So when we seek him, we don't tell him what we're going to do because we need directions from him and we need his approval. So we need to keep in our mind that it's important for us to seek God first because in order for us to enjoy complete victory, we must get direction from him. Amen. So we thank you for joining us tonight for this brief summary of the lesson. Pray that you're enjoying time with your family. We are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plainview, Louisiana. Uh, pastor Don Douglas is our pastor and we love you. God bless you. God keep you listening with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for the word, God. And we pray for every family, God, that you protect over this holiday season, God, that you save sinners, reclaim backsliders. And anyone that comes across this video, God, you know the need. We pray that you meet that need and refresh the saints everywhere. We give you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. We thank you again. We are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Dean, Louisiana. Pastor Donald Douglas is our parents. Thank God for our first lady. And thank God for all of you. Continue to subscribe, share the page. We love you. God bless you and Merry Christmas.